Hi, my dear students. Welcome to the class of physics. Now we are going to do a experiment in physics. What is the experiment? What is the aim of the experiment? Now we are going to find the angle of minimum deviation by the prism experiment. Okay. Before we are going to find the angle of minimum deviation, first we have to find the angle of deviation for a particular angle of incidence. So first we have to calculate or find the angle of deviation and angle of emergence for a particular angle of incidence. Okay. Now we are start our activity. Now we are start our experiment. Okay. We know about the aim of the experiment. Okay. Good. What is the apparatus required? What are the things required for doing this experiment? The things are, first one is meter scale. Yes, we know very well about that. A sharp pencil. I think all of you having it. The third one is prism. Okay. The fourth one is protractor. These are the four things needed for doing this experiment. Okay. And another one is four pins. A set of four, four pins which are required to do this. Okay. These are the four pins which are required to do this experiment. Okay. First, what we do? First, we do one thing. First one is place the white sheet in a wooden board. Perfectly place the white sheet in the wooden board with the help of four pins. Fix the four pins gently on the wooden board with the help of the paper. The paper is fixed gently. Okay. The paper is fixed perfectly. That is the first step. Okay. Second step, what we do? Second step, we place the prism in the center of the white paper. What is prism? The prism, we know very well about the prism. The, uh, the main property of the prism is which, which disperses light. We know very well. Okay. What is the shape of the prism? The shape of the prism is it contains two triangular surfaces. The first one is this. This is one of the triangular surface. And another one is this is the second triangular surface. There are two triangular surfaces and the three rectangular surface one two and three these are three rectangular surfaces these three rectangular surfaces are inclined to each other look at the prism there are three rectangular surfaces the three these three rectangular surfaces are inclined to each other so one of the surface which acts as the base okay these two triangular surfaces are placed like this so this is about a glass prism which is made up of glass, so this is called as glass prism. Now, first step, we want to draw the boundary of the glass prism perfectly. So, place the glass prism and I draw the boundary with a sharp pencil because boundary is much more important while doing this experiment. So, draw the boundary exactly with the help of the sharp pencil, very sharp pencil. Okay, yes, we successfully draw the boundary of the glass prism exactly, yes. Then, the second step is, we should draw the normal. How to draw the normal? Place the protractor here. Place the protractor here. The point, the center point of the protractor must be at the center of the one phase of the prism. Okay. Now this is the, this point is normal point. That means 90 degree. 90 degree with respect to one phase of the prism. So with respect to one phase of the prism, we should draw the normal. This is what? Normal line. Okay. Look at this. This is 90 degree with the one phase of the prism. Name the normal. The name of the normal is what? N. And this is the point O where the protector is placed. This is the first step. Then we have to choose the angle of incidence. What is the angle of incidence is choose? We have to choose. That is our choice. Now, I choose the angle of incidence which is, which is approximately for example 30 degree that means if the point is 90 perfectly we should place the protector on the normal okay 
Yes. This is 90, then this is 80, 70, 60. So this is 55. 90 minus 55, that is 35 degree. So this is 90, this is 80, 70, 60, 50. Now I place in 55. 90 minus 55, how much? That is 35 degree. So I choose the angle of incidence is 35 degree. So this is incident ray. This is the incident ray. Yes, exactly. This is the incident ray here. This is what? This is normal. So, what is the angle of incidence? I choose the angle of incidence is how much? 35 degree. This is the angle of incidence. The angle of incidence is nothing but angle between the normal and the incident ray. I name the incident ray that is P. PO is the incident ray. I is the angle of incidence. When this prism is placed like here, the light rays from the light rays, the incident ray passes through the prism and it gets refracted. After refraction, it will emerge out. We know about that. So, for point making, we have to fix two pins on the line PO. In between PO, you have to fix two pins on that. Two pins. Now I fix one pin. And the second pin also fixed on the line of the incident ray. That is the next step. Okay. This is the second step. The two, now the two pins are placed on the line. On the line of the incident ray. Okay, this is the second position. Okay, now the two pins are exactly placed on the line of the incident ray. The prism is placed. If there is no prism, the light ray travels in its straight line. That means the light ray travels in a straight line. That is a rectilinear propagation of light. Due to that, the light always travels in a straight line. We know very well about that. But when we are placing the prism in that path, in the, in the path of the light ray, the light ray gets refracted first. That means when a light goes from rarer medium to denser medium, it bends towards the normal. So the light gets first refracted first and then at, that, at, at this point, the light is once again refracted. First refraction takes place at this edge, this first face of the prism. Here light comes from rarer and goes to denser, so it bends towards the normal. Here the second phase, the light refracted in the, in that, the light gets refracted in the second phase of the prism also. In that place, the light bends away from the normal because the light goes from denser to rarer. Here glass is the denser, R is the rarer. So, after refraction, the light will emerge out like this. Okay, in this way, the light gets emerges out. But now we want to calculate the emergent ray by doing this experiment. How we can calculate? Let us wait. We will do. Okay. Now, I am trying to observe these two pins by this face of the prism. Because here the refraction takes place, we know very well. There are two refraction takes place. First refraction takes place at the first phase of the prism and the second refraction takes place at the second phase of the prism. After the second refraction, light must come out of this phase. So I am trying to observe the two pins from this phase of the prism. Okay. So first, I look at, I look at the prism with the two phases. Okay. Uh, I look at the prism in that phase, I try to place another one pin in such a way that the four pins are aligned to parallel each other. Now, I placed the third pin here. Yes, this is the point where the three pins are aligned. The three pins are 
aligned parallel to each other. This is the first pin. Wait a minute. Okay. Now look at the experiment. Now I set the third pin. I placed the third pin. But this third pin is placed aligned in a way which is along the two pins which are placed in the another face of the prism. Now we are looking with my eyes. Now I am looking with my eyes. Here three pins are aligned in a single straight line. It appears in a single straight line. It is not exactly aligned. It appears to align in a single straight line. So I catch the line of the prism. Okay, line of the emergence. Sorry, line of the emergence. So now I place another one more pin for extending the angle of the emergence. So now I place another one pin. Yes, I got the point. Yes, this is the place. Now I placed the fourth pin. Here the two pins are placed. This is fourth pin, this is third pin. In the another face there are two pins. Now I adjust and placed these two pins in the other face of the prism in such a way that the four pins are appear to be in a straight line. Now I am looking with my eyes. Now the four pins are appear to be in a straight line. That means here four pins are appear to be a single pin because they are placed in a single straight line that is due to the refraction of the prism so I noted these two points look at this these four pins are appear to align in a straight line that is the unity of the prism this line represents emergent line so now I marked these lines. This is one. I remove the pins and mark the points. One, two. Yes, I remove the prism also. This is third. Okay, three. And this is four. Now, I draw the four lines. Listen, this is PO, this is incident ray, this is what? Emergent ray. Now I extend the emergent ray line. Yes, I got it. So this is the emergent ray. This is incident ray, so the arrow mark is like here. This is emergent ray, so the light coming out from this path. This is what? the refracted ray here the refraction takes place so this is the refracted ray yes this is the refracted ray so incident ray refracted ray and the emergent ray okay these three rays are most important we got it the next we take the protractor and we draw a normal from the from this point this point is taken as what this is taken as O dash because this is O, this is O dash. I place the protractor here and I draw a normal line. Now the normal is yes, 90 degree. So we draw a straight line from this. This is a exact normal. So this is about 90 degree with the other face of the prism. Okay. Now we have to measure the angle of emergence. What is the angle of emergence here? The angle between the normal O dash N dash. This is normal. Here the normal is O N. Here the normal is O dash N dash. Now the angle between the normal and the emergent ray is known as angle of emergence which is indicated by the Greek alphabet delta. Now I just want to measure measure the angle of emergence the angle of emergence is um, 67 degrees so i noted here del is equal to approximately 67 degree the angle of incidence is equal to 35 degree which is first we chosen in this 
in this phase of the prism so the angle of incidence is 35 degree the angle of emergence is 67 degree but our ultimate aim is to find the angle of deviation to find the angle of deviation we must extend the angle of incidence so this is angle of incident extended angle of incidence and this is this is what extended angle of emergence so the angle of incidence is extended here the angle of emergence is extended here the angle between the extended angle of incidence and the extended angle of emergence is known as angle of deviation so this is del sorry this is del and the angle of emergence is e the angle of emergence is e the angle of deviation is delta that is greek alphabet so we have to find this angle of deviation by using the protractor by using this protractor we must calculate the angle of deviation delta for this we must extend the angle of incidence okay yes now the angle of deviation is calculated which is approximately which is equal to 41 42 yes 42 degrees delta is equal to 42 degrees so in this way we have to measure in this way in this way we measure the angle of emergence and the angle of deviation for the particular angle of incidence in the next step we follow the instruction given in the book we have to change the angle of incidence for example 35 degree next case 40 another one case is 45 degree for the different angle of incidence we should find out the angle of emergence and angle of deviation minimum three set of values should be taken and then we plot a graph with the help of graph we have uh, we have to calculate the angle of minimum deviation so in this way we are calculating the angle of deviation this is emergent ray this is e for emergence angle of emergence this is emergent ray this is emergent ray and this is incident ray the angle between incident ray and the normal is known as angle of incidence i the angle between emergent ray and the normal is known as angle of emergence the angle between the extended incident ray and the extended emergent ray the angle between the extended incident ray and the extended emergent ray is known as delta that is angle of deviation so if you change the angle of incidence the angle of emergence and the angle of deviation also changes so this is the experiment that is a very easy experiment be careful while doing the experiment in one point that is you must place the four pins in a straight line in such a way that the four pins the four pins appear to be in a straight line in in that way you should be placed that is the importance if the four pins are appear to be in a straight line then we will get the correct answer that is the trick of this experiment thank you for watching thank you my dear students bye thanks